It's been a while since I did one of these. I've been busy with different stuff, but nothing of great importance. I uh, did that uh, wood test. I can't recall if it was yes. It was the day before yesterday. Memory getting bad. My memory's failing so badly because I'm doing so much of the same thing over and over again, and it you know you can't distinguish one same thing from the other. It's all blends together. This video is, I just, this morning, my another way to reinforce drawers slash butt joints video just got remonetized again. After three days where it was uh, deemed not suitable <laughs> for advertising. And uh, in that three days, I think I missed out on somewhere around 10,000 views that were monetized, which is not, I'll be honest, it's not a big deal, but something like that could be a big deal. I mean, I've gone to bed some nights after posting a video that day, and then the next morning I get up and that video has gotten like 100,000 or 200,000 or 300,000 views overnight so in one night. So that could be a big difference right there. And this is the kind of nonsense that we're up against now with this crap. And for the life of me, I don't know what the possible reason could be that that video got flagged for not advertiser friendly. It has to be the use of joints in the title. That's the only thing I can think of. And possibly some of the things that I said in the video, like maybe uh, I said joints again, <laughs> and I also said abusive. Maybe these are words that get flagged by their so-called intelligent algorithm that picks this stuff out. That is, of course, unless somebody flagged the video themselves. You know, one of my many haters out there who just want to, you know, make people miserable would flag the video. I don't think so, though. I think it's the algorithm. I think it's the same situation as I had with the video on this channel where I was talking about cocking guns. And I think the word cock <laughs> got flagged. It's becoming more and more of a problem. And like I said before, this is how I make my living. So when you take the monetization away from the video. I'm not making any money. So what's the point of putting the video there in the first place? Okay, on to the second thing I want to talk about in this video, and that's the quitting part in the title. And it, I got to be honest, it's something that I've been thinking about for the past, I don't know, three years, seriously, thinking about it. One of the biggest reasons for that is that uh, with each passing year, I'm getting unhealthier and unhealthier because I'm not active enough. I don't uh, get out and do anything other than sit in front of the computer, either working on the project or working on the video or more and more lately, uh, reading the comments and going through the comments and all this stuff. And I know there are some of you out there going to say, well, why, why are you reading the comments? Don't bother reading the comments or why don't you hire somebody to read the comments and so on and so forth. I try to read the comments. I don't reply to very many anymore, but I try to read all of the comments on all my videos because I try to keep in touch with what's going on, what the people are thinking. And the comments, more than anything, is the way to get that. And like I said, I don't do a lot of replying anymore because it just takes too much time. And I, I don't have time for anything else. If you look at it <laughs> like the teacher in the classroom type thing, because we have to at this point. The teacher only has time to lay out the course material and present it and go over some of the problems with the whole class. So that would be me taking the time to make the video and present it and if possible, do a build article to you know give extra information. And I don't really have the time for individual personal guidance on different things. And I know that sounds extreme and I know that sounds like, oh, well, look at Mr. Important. You know, he's got no time for the little guy, but that's not it. I mean, it's everybody that does this kind of thing will have that same problem. You have to allot your time to the things that are going to do the most for the most people. I mean, if you're making videos to post on YouTube for free for uh, a wide audience, then that is your contribution. It's not the individual chats or talks. So like I said, I've been thinking about quitting, but I don't think I would quit outright. 
I think that I would just scale things back. And I'm not sure what that would involve at this point, but I do know that I need to I need to get out and get more physical work done. You know, it was last night I went downstairs to the basement to get laundry out of the dryer and just the act of climbing the stairs I was I was out of breath. And it's alarming because like 10 years ago, I can't say I was, you know, in tip top shape. I've never been in athletic shape, but I could work circles around a lot of people. And it was astounding how much I could get done. And when I compare it to now, it's uh, absolutely absurd. I mean, I get up in the morning and if I edit a video, I think I deserve a break. <laughs> so it's like, it's crazy. It's insane how lazy I've allowed myself to become. And the work around here, you know, I'm supposed to be finishing the renovation of this house, is suffering. I haven't done, like here it is almost at the end of the summer, and I haven't gotten very much done here at all. I've been constantly, steadily working on this here. So I'll go into a little bit of detail what I was thinking about. I've been watching the Homestead Craftsman uh, renovate a rental property that he's he bought for $12,000 and he's going to fix it up and rent it out. And that reminds me of, you know, something that I, I really like doing. I really like getting into that kind of thing as long as there's time permitting. I've, you know, ground to a halt here in my own house because I'm so wrapped up in doing this. But if I backed away from doing this and got into something like that, I think that that would, in the long run, be a lot better for me. At least I would have an objective other than sitting down all day. You know, I get up in the morning, I have to actually go somewhere to do something, and I have to get something done while I'm there. Otherwise, it would be a waste of time. That's what I was thinking about. Maybe buying a place, uh, a fixer opera and then fixing it up, not like I did here. It would be more of a basic fix up, just a kind of a flip idea. And no, I would not document any of it. It would all happen in that part of my life that's not covered on this here. In the meantime, going forward with this, I was thinking that I would limit the number of videos that I put out and uh, only concentrate on the things that are actually going to make me money from doing this. And that's concentrating on the build videos where I do something that I sell a plan for. And I know that sounds greedy or whatever to some people, but believe me, it's not. I have, I'm looking at my red channel here. I have 207 videos on that channel. I have nearly 400 on my main channel. How many on this channel already? Over 100, I think, or at least 100. And then on my home reno channel, I have more than 100 as well. So you're talking about a vast volume of free stuff that's already out there, you know, that I've already done. So, you know, if I take the time now to take care of the things, and, and I'll tell you why that is, because the landscape for YouTube is changing. It's like I, I pointed out in the beginning about this nonsense about this advertising thing. I mean, when you actually look at this, you say, these people, the advertisers that backed out of YouTube that precipitated all this to begin with, they already knew the kind of content that was on there. They have to be absolutely daft not to. And it's only because somebody pointed it out that they backed out to, you know, for public opinion. That's the only reason. Now, in the meantime, I do agree that there should be some kind of limits on what can be advertised on YouTube, but it should be a process that is, there's someone involved. YouTube is like a, the biggest, dumbest, single track, rigidly thinking machine that you, you can imagine. It only thinks in absolutes, you know, there's yes, no, right, wrong, monetized, not monetized. There's no gray area with, with YouTube. And there's very little human interaction or human involvement in any of these decisions that are made. And for, that's by necessity, I'm sure, because of the size of the thing. But 
this is important to the people that are have been doing this for a long time. Like there are some people that are absolutely convinced that, you know, if you've been doing this for a long time, then they get to know you type thing. They don't know anybody. There might be a few that uh, have some sort of special privileges, but I can tell you from my perspective, I have none. And they don't know me from the guy that posts one video per year and has like 10 subscribers because you get treated exactly the same way. Like there's no cutting you some slack for all the good work you've done. Uh, that means nothing. You have no track record or history with them. And then the other thing about it is at any point in time, it can all be taken away. They have the absolute power to take it all away. And you're, you're fucked, basically, or at least I am. I can't say I'm fucked. I, uh, I, get, I derive a lot of my income from the ad revenue that comes from these videos. But I could survive without it. Like I said, I could go in do something else, but simply I wouldn't be doing this anymore. I wouldn't have the time for it. I would have to earn a living to do something else. And right now this is what that is. Or if it was to fall significantly like it has done on say website ad revenue has, you know, gone steadily downhill. And I mean, I'm, I'm, I think the trajectory of my website is that as the traffic went up, the ad revenue went down. So I'm actually making the same amount today than I was making like three years ago. <laughs> okay, that's the long and the short of it. Um, changes are coming. I don't know when they're going to happen. I don't, I'm not big on doing things in a hurry. Not these days anyway. I'm kind of slow to act, especially on changes that affect what I'm doing. So I'm going to try to become more active and see where that goes. I'm also going to look into the house thing. Part of me wants to do that very badly, and I know that it would wind up being a good thing, but part of me really dreads <laughs> what I would have to go through to get that done. All the, um, basically all the bullshit red tape that you have to go through these days to do anything. It's that part of the thing that I really, I don't mind going in and gutting a place and getting filthy. You know, I, I love the idea of taking a shower at the end of the day and seeing actual dirt coming off myself and going down the drain. There's nothing that actually feels better than that. Well, there, there are a few things, I guess, but it's a sense of accomplishment that you get when you do stuff like that. But it's really dulled by the stuff that you have to go through to get to the point where you can do that kind of thing. So that's in the back of my mind also. That's one of the things about, you know, doing anything. When you're young, you don't know anything. So there's nothing holding you back from doing all this stuff. You just do it. And then you deal with the things as they come. But as you get older, you know about these things. So that kind of holds you back. So the more you know, the less likely you are to do something. 